comes on and Australia's unique 5 litre V8 touring car formula is still the rage. Season 93 produced record crowds, big fields, short tempers and two outstanding results. Glenn Seaton and Alan Jones power to a 1-2 in the Shell Australian Championship Series and Larrikin Larry Birkin struck gold in the Tui's 1000. For 94, the ranks are even stronger. Prodigal Peters returned to the general. Wayne Gardner has discovered teams go better with Pope. And two leader-led puts, Tony Longhurst and Paul Morris, have joined the big boys with a couple of V8 toys. The class of 94 is ready to rumble. The Seven Network welcomes you to Sydney's Amaru Park Raceway for round one of the Shell Australian Championship Series. Proudly brought to you by Shell. Go well, go Shell. Tui's, Brewers since 1869. And by Dunlop, stick with Dunlop. The hottest act in Australian motorsport is ready to roar in 94 here at Amaru Park. Hello, I'm Mike Raymond. Welcome to Seven's exclusive coverage of the 10 round Shell Australian Touring Car Championship Series. And if you thought last year was tight, Alan Moffat, it's even tighter this year. It's very hard to imagine that just a year ago this formula started, Mike. Today, a year, it's, it's one year old. And uh, although the teams have had five months since Bathurst to get on the ball here today, the competition is just superb. Let's take a look at the times after qualifying yesterday. How tight would you like it at the front part of the field? Mark Scaife with a 49.795 led the qualifiers late yesterday afternoon over Glenn Seaton and the PJ Falcon with a 49.827. Third, Alan Jones, his teammate with a 50.024. Dick Johnson next, so the Fords are qualifying well at 50.073. Thomas Vazera in the HRT Commodore of 50.133. And John Bow and Dick Johnson, second car of 50.141. And that is just the top six in the field that we look at today. Well, Amaru Park, of course, is home base. It's the sixth time the Australian Touring Car Championship has opened in Sydney. And we couldn't think of a better place to say hello to our celebrated commentator, Doug Mulray. Lovely day, God's country wouldn't be dead for quids. Thank you so much, Mike and Alan. May I say it's wonderful to be sharing sporting space with petrol heads around the nation once again on the Seven Network. I'm delighted to be here to join this august body of well-informed, stout-hearted men in the commentary booth, not only because the battle between Henry and the General promises so much this year, but also because I've finally cracked it for one of these tasteful Seven Sport jackets. A brand new one, I might add. I've left the label on to prove that, just to establish for the girls that it wasn't worn at Bathurst last year by Wilco. <laughs> no little black book in the pocket, no whiff of Old Spice under the Warwick Farms. <laughs> We're coming here today from Sydney, or as it's become known more recently, Sydney, Australia. Yes, Sydney, the Olympic city, home of Jumping Jack Faye, the athlete's premier, home to his political nemesis, the Reverend Fred Nile, seen here pitching for the Paralympics, and of course, home to Fred's worst nightmare, the gay and lesbian Mardi Gras, which I mention here purely and simply to facilitate the gratuitous usage of pictures of scantily glad people of dubious sexuality, gyrating rhythmically and arousing each other to an unseemly lubricity. But I digress. This is Sydney, Sydney, scene of Charlie's attack, home of his attacker, brightest jewel in the South Pacific diadem, and of course, the venue for round one of the Australian Touring Car Championship. Welcome to Amaru Park. Amaru, as you're constantly told when we broadcast from here, is an Aboriginal word meaning water over rock. Park is an English word meaning wide open green space set aside for recreational purposes. We never tell you that because you already know it and it uses up valuable time. Time we could have devoted to other Aboriginal definitions like Narrabeen, which of course means fitness camp, or Mabo, which as everyone knows is uh, the wife of Pabo and mother of all the little bows. I'd love to have told you all that, but unfortunately there isn't time. Mike? <laughs> Dougie Mulray, you can't change him. As we gave you the times earlier for yesterday's practice, all of that changes on a Sunday morning with the running of the Peter Jackson Dash that carries championship points. They're lined up down there for the draw. Let's go down to Andy Raymond. Mark Scaife doesn't want the top one. He's not quite sure exactly uh, how they've been planned. I can tell you this is random. It is real guesswork. Alan Jones and Glenn Seaton both pulling there out. Thomas Mazera fared very well here last year. Gentlemen, what positions have we drawn? Oh, Mark Scaife has drawn position number one. And Scaifey, you qualified first. This is just reward. The fella next to you has got the wrong end of the deal. Well, you know, that's, it's such a luck thing, Andy. You can't, obviously, you know, all you can do is, is, is pluck this one. I really feel sorry for Glenn again. Like, he's got to be the worst drawer of these things in the, in the category. But uh, 
let's see what happens. This is, this is only the first part. Thanks, Andy. Mark Scaife retains pole position in the Winfield Racing Commodore, starting at a position two for the dash this morning. Thomas Mazer in the mobile telecom Commodore VP. Then it's John Bauer of Tasmania out of position number three. Alan Jones out of position number four. Dick Johnson has gone back one spot. He starts out of five. And the hard luck man, Glenn Seaton, from two to six. It'll be a slow start. The pace car will pull off to the right. Expect him to gun it now. They come under starter's orders with Mark Scaife on the inside looking for the break and Thomas Masira up smartly on the outside. But also Alan Jones who made a brilliant move and now corners third spot as they go to the top of the hill. The two shell Falcons are then tailed by Glenn Seaton. Seaton gets pushed sideways as they come over the top of the hill but Scaife, fastest man in qualifying. He wants to cement that position in this dash today. He's opened up a two or three car length on Mazira and at this stage it looks like Mazira is actually holding up the Fords as they come through the back. A great run there by Scaife through that uh, Dunlop loop. Very important to be able to maximize that first corner, and he's done it well. Here they come down to two east turn. Thomas Mazira, car number 015. Behind him, Alan Jones, then the two Shell Falcons, and Glenn Seaton has nowhere to pass. Hard under brakes. And look at the bunch up at the back, the four Falcons in a row. And Mazira, he's holding them up. There's a big gap opening out here with Scape, so it's Mazira leads them through. Alan Jones, he'll be keen to push through on the inside for second position. The two Shell Falcons, and poor old Glenn Seaton got the dud draw and the Peter Jackson dash draw once again he's back in sixth position well this is one track where fighting for Paul really pays off and for escape to uh, draw number one you can see the advantage it's given him well there's our Dunlop race cam riding with Dick Johnson and the Shell FAI insurances car they exit the loop and make their way down the back Jones stalking the tail of Thomas Mazira in the 015 Commodore then, of course, the two Shell Falcons, and right behind them, Glenn Seaton. Still nowhere to go. Everyone trying to protect their own butt at this stage. They exit to his turn and make the run to the loop. Just look at how evenly matched these two cars are. Almost identical under braking. They get on at the straight slams at a straight line speed. It's going to be a very, very close contest. Mark Scaife, fastest man in Saturday's practice, pull number one retained his spot at the head of the field and he has opened up an enormous gap of about 10 car lengths at this stage over Mazira. Alan Jones trying to hold third. That'll give him the inside row for the uh, twin 25-minute races here today. But there's Mark Scaife starting the season well. Three points in the championship yesterday for quick time. And he's going to pick it up at three this morning. Mazera a little bit conservative through the corners. He seems to be all right in a straight line. And Mark Scaife and the Winfield Commodore gets across the line. Second spot is going to be Thomas Mazera, followed then by Alan Jones. Next is John Bauer, Dick Johnson. And finishing at the tail of the field is Glenn Seaton. So, confirmation of placings in the Peter Jackson dash. Mark Scaife, the winner, picks up three championship points. Thomas Mazira finished in second. Alan Jones third. John Bow was fourth. Dick Johnson was fifth. And Glenn Seaton sixth. And with a lot of work to do. A magnificent summer Sydney afternoon here at Amaru Park Raceway. Ideal conditions for the opening round of the Shell Australian Touring Car Championship and a huge crowd in attendance here. We have the cars out on the racetrack. Let's take a look at the lineup today. Out of uh, pole position, Mark Scaife in the Winfield Racing Commodore. Keeping in mind he's already won the dash. Thomas Mazira will start on the outside of the front row. Alan Jones on the inside of row two and John Bow alongside of him. And out of five at 17, Dickie Johnson. In position number six, Glenn Seaton, the baby-faced assassin in uh, the Falcon. We've got Peter Brock back with the general out of position number seven with sponsorship from Mobile as last year and assistance from Telecom this year. Paul Morris is in position eight. He's a little quicker than the man who built his engine, Larry Perkins, in position nine. And Tony Longhurst in a Commodore for the first time in position ten. Out of 11, seven, Neils on wheels, Crompton, the Coca-Cola Commodore. Jim Richards in six starts out of 12. Wayne Gardner in the Coca-Cola Commodore starts out of position 13. Trevor Ashby in the Commodore out of 14. And Bob Pearson in the Product Machine out of 15. At 16, Terry Finnegan, who's been here for years. 17 sees Bob Jones. Position 18, Kevin Waldock in another of the Falcons. Chris Smerton in position 19. And John Trimboli in position 20. Out of 21 today, it's Mike Conway in the Commodore VL. 22, the lone two-litre car in the pack, Steve Ellery in the Sierra. 23 is 42, Glenn Mason. And rounding out the 24-car field in 36, it's Neil Shembury. That's the starting lineup. Let's go down to Andy Raymond. And it's not only the guys up the front of the pack that are going to be racing and bashing panels. There's a few guys at the back of the pack. And the new team, the Coke Boys, team manager Wally Story, what are we expecting? Oh, I think we were hoping, Andy, for a fairly steady run, really. New team and new group of people. 
mean, we've got a lot of experienced people, but they haven't worked together as a group, and we're running here against a bunch of very competitive people, as, as the good times will show. So I think we're hoping for just a good consistent run and a good finish, really. I mean, you've got four weekends in a row, so you can't afford to go leaning on too many people too soon, but I think it's going to be very willing in the first corner. And dramas as Thomas Majera in the 015 car failed to start and has gone to the rear of the field as the field gets underway with Mark Schaefer Blitzer off the inside. Coming up very smartly on the inside of him was uh, Alan Jones and look at Glenn Seaton making a big move up the inside. I tell you what, by the time they get through you'll find that Glenn Seaton has got up into fourth spot but he's going to be shouldered back by one of the Shell uh, Falcons. They take the run through Dunlop Loop and make their way down the back straight for the first time. Drama's right in the closing seconds of uh, before the start of this race with uh, Mazira going from the front row to the tail of the field. And Glenn Seaton trying to get down on the inside of Alan Jones as they make their way through that turn and back behind them is Peter Brock. So we've had a, a bit of a jumbled start, but Scaife is where he wanted to be, Alan yeah, Moffat. A lonely front uh, row there for him, but he wouldn't have been crying not to see uh, Mazira pull up on the line. These starts happen so quickly that the uh, slightest mistake and you're in trouble. Thomas unfortunately couldn't get his car started under under the flag and uh, was relegated to the rear of the field. Well, we've got a Commodore leading, Dougie, but there's a whole brace of Falcons just behind. Very fast Falcons. There are 13 cars within 0.8 of a second of each other. It's just as well they uh, widened this section of the track here because we need all the road uh, we can possibly get our hands on to fit these very fast and very competitive motor cars. Park. Well, Scaife got away to a brilliant start, Alan, but it uh, looks like Johnny Bow has been able to get up and just pull back that little bit of a deficit. Yes. And if those other guys can stay in his draft, uh, they might make life uncomfortable for him over the 28 lap distance. I've just been advised that Johnny Bow is driving with a pain killing injection in his shoulder. He injured his shoulder uh, during practice yesterday and is uh, under doctor's orders. They decided to let him start, but he's running with a severe disadvantage in the shoulder. Well, if he has uh, trouble, uh, Dick Johnson is shadowing him, and uh, the two PJ cars are right there. It's a, a lonely Commodore out in front at the moment, but Mark Scaife has got a superbly uh, handling uh, package here at the moment. They've worked hard on this car since Bathurst, and it's showing here today. I think um, the fact that the Fords are so close to them is a credit to their uh, Christmas uh, hard-working uh, package, but by the same token, that Winfield car is out there and doing it well at the moment. Well, after only a couple of laps, Mark Scaife, the pole man, the winner of the uh, dash this morning in car number two, continues to lead the two uh, Shell FAI Falcons of uh, John Bow and Dick Johnson. Then, uh, not too far in arrears to them, Glenn Seaton and Alan Jones. Peter Brock would be the next one, and Paul Morris with Tony Longhurst behind him. Larry Perkins and Jimmy Richards, fairly tight there. Scaife, he did it uh, pretty easy in practice. He was the number one man. He won the dash, and he's well out in front here. He looks to be comfortable. The car's balanced. He was going very quickly at Bathurst. They've done some work since Bathurst, and certainly at this uh, very early stage of the opening round of the Australian Touring Car Championship, he's uh, stamping himself as the man to beat. He certainly is, and we take uh, Dunlop Race Cam. In, uh, as we ride with Dickie Johnson on the back side of the course. Dick, you'll notice, is running one of those window nets. And the reason uh, a couple of journos poo-pooed the idea when we raised it at Bathurst and suggested the next thing they'll be doing is playing the American anthem at touring car meetings, Dick Johnson values his scone, let me tell you. And in that accident at Bathurst, Johnson's, the outside of Johnson's helmet came into contact with a concrete wall. Yep. And the guys at NASCAR and America and other forms of racing put the net on the window purely to keep your noggin inside the car. Actually, Excellent you're idea. quite wrong, Mike. That's not a safety net on Dick's window. Uh, with last night's full moon, Dick decided to go prawning off Malabar. If you look closely, you'll see the shell uh, on his helmet. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> they drop into Dunlop Bloop. Johnson right on the tail of his uh, team partner, John Bow. 12 months ago, the opening round of the championship here, Johnson won this race and Bow won the second. At the moment, though, they're following Mark Scaife, who's doing everything ever so well as he comes down to the left-hander at Tui's turn. Matsira is getting over his uh, bad start. He's moved from 18th down to 16th this early stage. That's going to be an expensive day for uh, the, uh, the mobile team, the telecom team. The Pete Pete car um, not able to start, then have to join the field at the rear. Hate to lose points on an opening round, Mike. It's just uh, demoralizing for the rest of the, your morale for the rest of the season. Hammer is a real handling circuit. And the cars that are out in front at the moment, the first six are showing the fruits of some hard work since Bathurst. 
Are we seeing restraint here today like we didn't see last year? New category, everyone wanted to impress day one. These guys, I won't say they're in processional mode, maybe they're holding it back for the second heat, but we saw a, a lot of carnage last year in the opening laps of the race, and these guys are just sitting in each other's draft, and if you can't be at the front, there's no point bending the car if you're running six. Uh, certainly a lot of that, Mike, when I think a lot of the fellas are realising the value of winning the Shell Australian Touring Car Championship, and you have to do that over ten rounds. Absolutely ridiculous to go out and launch yourself in the first five laps here this morning. Dougie, getting a little close behind the two Shell cars, Glenn Seaton, and right behind him, Alan Jones. We didn't see a lot of that last year. Or the, the other way round, I'm sorry. The Shell cars followed the Seaton team. Um, it's interesting to see Dickie and Bowie out in front of them. They seem to be running pretty strong, and they seem to be running pretty comfortably. You talk about the uh, apparent calm of this race start and the processional nature at the moment of the race. I, I think really a lot of guys learned a lot of lessons during the first round last year. And as has been said earlier in the commentary, we've got uh, the next four rounds over a period of four weeks. There isn't really time to rebuild motor cars and to get them across the country. We're talking uh, Tasmania, we're talking the Gold Coast, we're talking Melbourne. This is, uh, this is a tough series and these guys have to keep these cars straight if they want to win points and recognition. Absolutely, and just looking at the uh, the rundown at the moment as uh, we look in the Bridgestone uh, race cam being carried by Glenn Seat. Order is still Mark Scaife. Right behind him, John Bow, then Dick Johnson. Alan Jones is next. Glenn Seaton, one back behind him. Brock is there. Tony Longhurst, a great ride for him and the new Benson and Hedges um, Commodore prepared by uh, Larry Perkins and his team partner in the Diet Coke Commodore. Paul Morris runs in eighth. Ninth is Larry Perkins and tenth is Neil Crompton. And uh, Crompton at this stage, two spots ahead of uh, Wayne Gardner. So there's the gap. First, second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth. And uh, Peter Brock back there in seventh spot. I was just talking to Rocky before the start of the race, very happy to be back with the general, very happy to have the additional money behind him and excited about the number of technicians and people jumping every time he clicks his fingers. He thinks this is a good year for him. 49 years of age, Peter Rock, I think uh, he's certainly strong enough and talented enough to do it all again. He can do it any time he wants. It's uh, just uh, preparation will make all the difference this year for his performances. Well, there he is, Brocky, carrying some mobile livery and telecom mobile net. So I guess it's the mobile telecom mobile car. <laughs> Close. Might be, might be a bit of a mouthful, but yeah. we'll get it out there. Uh, and good to see uh, telecom uh, sending those messages back and forth through to the pits. Looking at this with Scaife just edging away a little bit. Johnson sitting in behind Bauer. So is Bauer holding up Johnson or they're uh, running no, just... Not, not really. I think Dick's uh, happy with this position. He's certainly... Uh, John's certainly not getting away from him, but uh, these fellas know that it, it's a team effort and if one can't make it, the other one will. But it, last year we didn't see Dick running in tandem as effectively as we're watching here right now. I think the reason for that perhaps is his team has had an injection of money from FAI, so he has two very strong sponsors in FAI and Shell, long-term sponsor of Johnson Racing. And uh, Dick says that has enabled him to invest a little more in technology and also in testing and a very extensive testing program as they come up now on the first of the lap cars. Watch this. Just can't pick the number of that car as they, they he pulls to the outside. Good move there. Glenn Mason yep. in his did, VL. Yeah, he did a good job. He saw them all approaching and let them through on the inside as our Dunlop race cam showed as Johnson goes through. And there's the gap back to Alan Jones and the first of the Blue Falcons with Glenn Seaton right on his bumper bar. And Glenn Seaton has just set a new lap record. The old lap record, 50.5 seconds. Seaton has gone around, in spite of the fact that he's sitting back in fifth or sixth, in 50.46, a new lap record. I don't think anybody will be surprised to see the lap record fall under perfect conditions like this. And there goes... Coca yes, that's uh, Neil Crompton and the uh, first of the uh, Coca-Cola Commodore. Oh, dear. That's not good to see, but he's... Uh, He's off the racetrack. I'm not sure if he's uh, ready to come back on again. That was on the uh, exit to Tui's corner. So uh, that's been an expensive uh, drop down through the field. As we pick up the pace at the front of the field, John Bow running in second, Dick Johnson is third, Alan Jones is fourth, and Glenn Seaton is fifth. Compton was 10th when he had his off. An unfortunate incident for him on Sally, his lady's birthday. Not the present he wanted to give her, I'm sure. I think uh, Dick is uh, harassing John a little bit more here. He's uh, locked up a break there on the uh, approach to, to his uh, left-hander. And uh, if, if John is not careful here, I think the boss is going to slip through. Well, the reason I thought that maybe I asked the question, was he holding him up? Look at Brock. Brock has been able to pick up this group of Falcons. And if John is really feeling any discomfort with a painkiller and a very sore shoulder today, 
I guess Dick has got to leave it to John to move out of the way. You can't radio in and say, pull over and let me through, then close the door behind me. Well, John's pretty good at uh, making sure that his car stays in whatever position he's got it at the time. Uh, Dick isn't going to be able to uh, just uh, walk by with his arm out the window. But by the same token, if John is hurting, this is not the kind of circuit with the tight corners that you want to have your arm in any kind of pain. Scaife opening the gap now. Scaife definitely pulling away from the rest of the field. He looks very much in control of this race. We've got uh, Bowie and Johnson cruising along in second and third positions and apparently holding up Jones and Seaton. I saw um, the first of the mobile telecom mobile net cars dive under Seaton under brakes. A good year there. Very aggressive driving from Brocky. He's enjoying this new car. What we didn't see a lot last year is four cars in a group that you couldn't throw a picnic blanket over. And uh, this is really tremendous stuff here at the moment. It's only going to take one missed gear change on any one of these drivers and uh, they're going to lose their spot. Certainly congratulations are in order to Cavs. They've um, balanced up the Holden uh, Falcon battle and, and it's going to be fantastic for the spectators for the whole season. Neil Crompton out of the race. Meanwhile, we go his teammate Wayne Gardner aboard the Coca Cola Commodore. Wayne having his first race in this brand new Wally Storyville car. Wayne hard at work. Teammate Crompton had a bit of an engine problem yesterday, had to put the spare engine in car seven. Wayne's been making quite good progress for the first race for this brand new team, position 13 at the moment. And considering how tight and competitive the field is at the sharp end, this is a very good effort for this new multi-million dollar coca-cola team i was talking to crompton just before the start he was telling me that they altered the car they took out the pan hard system which was originally there in the front end and they have as a result got a few stability problems you'll have noticed during practice that uh, wayne in particular and crompton to a lesser extent were locking up brakes front and back so uh, they're going to have to get this suspension sorted out this is the first round we can't expect too much no and this is a track where balance is absolutely uh, uh, mandatory doug you can't have the slightest little iffy here and uh, the cars that are out in front bit of a challenge here alan sorry under brakes uh, glenn seaton pushing his way through on teammate alan jones half distance as they come across the start finish line this time around so seaton really getting a move on here he's going to move up into the mirrors of the shell falcons just talked to the shell team yesterday dick's car 17 a brand new car built for this season and they proudly tell me it's the lightest falcon ever built i'd like to know what it went across the scales that but the main problem the fords have been battling since this series started is getting down to a competitive weight limit of 1300 kilos look at brocky here Seaton's gone through on uh, on Jonesy, and now Brocky's having a go as well. All over him like a rash. Glenn Seaton, car number one, the Peter Jackson Falcon. A bad draw in the dash this morning out of six. He's allowed Scaife to get away, and Scaife already has six championship points. And he's moved up right onto the tail of the two Shell Falcons. And you'll notice that Peter Brock in uh, zero 05 is now onto the tail of uh, Alan Jones as they sweep oh. right beneath the start oh, finishing. Oh, oh, I guess him oh, a tap in the tail. Oh, Jones oh, won't oh, like that. Oh, oh. that uh, bits of fairing fell off there, you saw. That's I've very got a feeling uncharacteristic. Got a, I've got a feeling Jones has got a problem anyway because he was slowing. He might have. And we'll wait and see whether that pans out to be uh, true because Tony Longhurst was right on the tail of uh, Peter Brock in uh, the zero 05 car. And what an outstanding performance, day one. They've rolled this one out of uh, Larry Perkins' workshop, uh, painted it yellow and put all the B&H paraphernalia on the car. And it's a great testimony to um, Larry Perkins Engineering. And we saw earlier Alan Jones drifting back through the pack, and that's exactly what has happened. He's gone well and truly off the, the boil, and it wouldn't surprise me to see Jones in the, uh, in the pits in the next lap or so as Brock goes through. There are more bits falling off the car as he circulates. Let's look at Seaton go. Yeah, Seaton's warming to this. He's got uh, John Bauer, who's just edged ahead of Dick Johnson just a little bit. And keep in mind, these guys are also trying to protect their tyres for the uh, the second heat. It's a very hot day here at Amaru Park, so if you uh, if you don't have to really do a lot of charging and get those wheels off and the rough stuff here into the pits, let's go down to Andy Raymond. What's the problem, Andy? Oh, whatever it is, they're not doing much about it. I think the changing uh, it's just as easy to change four tires as it is one. Yep. 
That's not really the start that the uh, PGA team wanted today. And it may be one deflating tyre as we pick up on our Bridgestone race camp. Heading up to the uh, top of Pitcher Pave Hill again. The Protect uh, Commodore off to uh, the left hand side as Seaton goes through here. Now dips to the right, closes on uh, Johnson. Bauer sitting uh, just one of him, one uh, in front of him, and you probably heard Can't. that little. I think he hit the curb there, yes. climbed the curb. Yeah. Uh, Dick being very adventurous there. It's uh, it's a dicey act hitting the curbs. These cars, they weigh a lot and uh, they're sprung very firmly. Uh, you can get bounced around. It's unsettling him more than it is gaining him for him. It's interesting now as they come up on a lap car as Jones goes back into the field, Doug. In position 20, quite remarkable. That car looked like it was out to me, but mm. uh, they've got it going again, and he's uh, presently running in 20th position with his teammate Seaton climbing all over the shell cars. Seaton is definitely being held up. At this I point. think at this stage, uh, Dick's happy enough to maybe take a third out of this and make sure John gets a second. But Glenn Seaton is unhappy because he wants to unload the pair of them. Yeah. And I mean by unload to uh, pick up second spot to uh, to scathe. You can see he's getting into aggressive mode here. He's having a look. Glenn. They move on to the back straight as we check out the race score, courtesy of Shell and Mark Scaife is your race leader. Second spot being held down by John Bauer, third to Dickie Johnson. On the move is Glenn Seaton in fourth spot and Peter Brock is five in 05. Back at Amaru Park in just a moment. Back here at Amaru Park Raceway, round one. The Shell Australian Touring Car Championship continues with Mark Scaife leading over John Bauer. Here's the fight for third. Dick Johnson of Queensland in the Shell FAI Falcon and right behind him is the defending national champion Glenn Seaton and the Peter Jackson Falcon as they come into lap traffic running down to the hard right hander at the lake turn. And it looks like uh, young Ellery in the lone two litre car, the uh, Sierra that's running in there but waving everyone by and doing the right job as Glenn Seaton gets alongside Dickie Johnson as they head up uh, towards the uh, top of Bitcher Pave Hill and, and playing the waiting game has been Seaton in the number one car. Now, whether or not he'll be able to do the same to John Bauer, I don't think Dick appreciated that, but he did leave a gap there open and Glenn took it. It was a very good move on uh, Glenn's part. He'd been uh, stalking him for uh, a number of laps and just got up alongside him down the pit straight. It was going to be a bit iffy by the time they got to the kink in the main straight but executed well and uh, defended as well as he could. Uh, Dick had to uh, bow to the superior speed in the Peter Jackson car. We can see that now he's definitely got the legs on Dick. He's moving away from Dick with eight laps to go. Seaton playing the trump car. Last year's champion looking like he has a, a real chance of becoming this year's champion. That is clearly one very fast Falcon circulating Amaru Park at the moment. Seven laps to go now as they go uh, across the uh, stripe. Beneath the tower here at Amaru Park Raceway, Mark Scaife, the Winfield Commodore, leads uh, race one of round one. There's Brocky starting to close up a little now behind Dick Johnson, so Brock's very competitive here today. And Glenn Seaton, who has now passed Johnson, is working hard. Whether or not uh, six and three quarter laps will be enough to haul in uh, John Bow and maybe dispose of him, I don't know. Well, I think Brock would be very happy just to get Dick at this stage. He might just be able to do that. He's, uh, he's threatening for sure. A uh, couple of more laps, a bit of slipstreaming, and uh, he'll be right on Dick's uh, back bumper bar. We've got all uh, three tyre companies uh, represented well here today. I'll tell you what, Glenn Seaton is making enormous inroads on John Bauer. Yep. The leader has just gone across the line. John Bauer goes across now. Not too far back behind him is Glenn Seaton. Then you have Dick Johnson, Peter Brock closing on Johnson. So the positions could change beyond the leader in the closing uh, six laps of this race. And of course, we've got another race to go. This <laughs> circuit notoriously hard on tyres, Alan. Yes, well, we've got uh, Dunlop holding off Bridgestone here at the moment. Mark Scaife uh, leading the field on Yokohama. Seaton having just passed uh, a Dunlop car on his Bridgestone tyres. So uh, everybody's in here with a, with a, uh, a chance. A slight lock up. Yeah, a little lock up there, but uh, he's, not... he's pulling uh, Bow in, and Bow has been unable to pull in uh, wow. Mark Scaife. Watch him under brakes down into Goodyear here. He's definitely picked up another two car lengths. He is one, two car lengths off the back. That's uh, not a uh, Peter Jackson in uh, Glenn's uh, mouth. He's uh, got his drink bottle connected. Across the line, five laps to go. Here is the battle for the race for second. Mark Scaife, Scaife driving brilliantly out in front. John Bow holding down second with a crook shoulder 
and uh, closing on him is Glenn Seaton who wants second out of this because that will give him a front row starting spot alongside Scaife in the second race this afternoon. And he is close all over yep, yep. Uh, John Bauer. Bauer he's got a pain in the shoulder and he's rapidly getting a pain yes. in the butt. <laughs> they come down to Tui's corner. Now Bauer, will he try to defend second because he would be aware the front row is a little better than row two here. It's important. Seaton's car. Plenty oh, of testing. He's declaring his intentions here. He'll be at the inside here if he can get all the power on. And he's going to give it one hell of a try. Done and it. here he yeah. goes. Sorry, John. They're second. A change of position. Four laps to go. Scaife in front. Seaton has fought his way now from position number six to second. You can pass at Amaru Park. you just got to do it properly. Well, that's always the price of driving defensively. You can block a person for so long, but eventually they get the flow of the corner. And Glenn Seaton did a classic rerun there on uh, John Bow to uh, nail second spot and has really uh, got the uh, the drive of the day so far. This is a beautifully sorted car. It never puts a foot wrong. It looks perfect on what is far from an ideal circuit for a car of this size and horsepower. Well, not only that, the same would apply to uh, Mark Scaife, who really has been able to, to free flow his race, conserve his tyres, Obviously, Glenn Seaton has had to uh, work his a little harder as he comes up now on the tail of the Coca-Cola 7 machine of Neil Crompton, who hangs to the wall, lets him go by, doesn't want to interfere. He's had problems already. He'll be back and more competitive, hopefully, in the second race this afternoon. They've got three laps to go for uh, race one of round one. Checking the gap between first and second, it's 5.3 seconds now. It'll be interesting to see if Scaife, having cleared uh, the shell cars, is able to make inroads into Scaife's commanding lead. One question, Alan. If uh, if uh, Seaton had drawn the uh, front row with uh, Mark Scaife, you wouldn't think there'd be 5.3 seconds between no, them now? No, would you? It would be 0.5 of a second. So you believe that the second race this afternoon is going to be a ripper? It'll be the one that counts. John Bauer, car number 18. Tried to hang on to the, uh, the tail of uh, Glenn Seaton. Mark Scaife, as Doug has already pointed out, is five plus. And uh, Larry Perkins at this stage still trying to defend. He's back in seventh spot. He's got Jim Richards eight right behind him. Two laps to go for the leader. Beautiful day here at Amaru Park. The racing has been tight. Very, very bright, but we haven't seen uh, rumbled fenders here today in the opening race, and that's good because we're going to have a full field, very competitive for race number two a little later. Yeah, in spite of all the predictions, I was reading uh, Wayne Webster's column, and uh, he was convinced that these guys were all going to go out there and destroy each other in the first couple of laps, but uh, there's too much money at stake, too much brine. Last year, I think uh, it was everyone a new formula trying to sort out their cars for the first time, and some were a little over exuberant. They know these cars have done a lot of testing. There's no point if you stick your nose down the inside and, and uh, spin someone out. The chances are you're going to take the front spoiler off your own car and finish 14th or 15th, and that'll be costly in the championship. They've also learned how to put the back bumper bars on a little tighter. <laughs> They're coming across the line, Mark Scaife. Last lap board is out. He heads up Bitcher Pave Hill. He is the leader over Glenn Seat, running away from John Bow in third place. Johnson is fourth. Peter Brock is in fifth. Sixth place. About to be resolved. Paul Morris is uh, up there, running in sixth. Larry Perkins is seventh. Jimmy Richards is eighth. Thomas Mazira, fabulous drive from the rear of the field back tonight. And Tony Longhurst is tenth. So we've seen a fabulous uh, opening race without incident, really. Only uh, Thomas Mazira failing to make the front line. And then, of course, Alan Jones with a tyre problem that took him to the pits right about mid-race distance. Down to the lake now. That gap is still about five and a quarter seconds. It'll be tighter in the second heat. Make no mistake about that. Checkered flag ready to unfurl as Mark Scaife comes off the final turn to go on and win heat number one at Amaru Park Raceway today. Second place will go to the defending champion, Glenn Seaton, in car number one for the Peter Jackson team. John Bauer takes third. Fourth goes to Johnson. Fifth goes to Brock. And sixth goes to Paul Morris over Larry Perkins, Jimmy Richards. Well, well done, Mark Scaife. He's happy about it. The clenched fist came out the window. This is a great way to start the season. Checking them out now for you on the Shell Race Score. Mark Scaife takes race number one here today over Glenn Seaton's Peter Jackson Falcon. Third, John Bow in the Shell FAI Falcon. Fourth was his team partner, Dick Johnson, and fifth was Peter Brock.
finishing back in sixth spot. A fabulous drive. Cut number 23, Paul Morris. Larry Perkins finishes seventh in the Castrol Commodore. Eighth was Jimmy Richards. Ninth, Thomas Mazira. And tenth, Tony Longhurst. Better racing even to come. And a warm welcome back to Amaru Park. Mark Scaife, the winner of the first race here today. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks, Andy. Obviously, the car went very, very well. The tyres, Yokohama tyres, were as good as anybody else's, I think. Maybe the best. So uh, the car didn't get sideways anywhere, and uh, we're very happy with it. Mark, you looked as though you've just jumped out of a pool. Well, as long as the other guys look worse, I'm happy. You saw Glenn Seaton there. Did you know he was coming through? Yeah, I knew he was coming through. I just had gaps all the time, and I just tried to keep the gap about the same without using the tyres up. The car's in great order for the next one. That's, that's what's important. Good luck. Thanks, mate. A beautiful day at Sydney's Amaru Park Raceway. The threat of thunderstorms and late showers may come true, but they certainly will be after the meeting here today at Amaru Park. Mark Scaife won the opening encounter. Glenn Seaton came from six to second. That's at least made him on the front row of the field for the second encounter. Let's go down to Andy Raymond. Yeah, thanks a lot, Mike. You mentioned it's a beautiful day down here. There's plenty of sun in the cockpit of this 4DB. Glenn Seaton, you said in the last race, was up to 60 degrees Celsius. Yeah, it does get a bit warm, Andy, but uh, that's part of motor racing. It's such a hot day and always Amaru here. There's no airflow to get into the car, so that's why it runs so hot. You, uh, you had to charge from sixth place in the first TG. It's nice starting up front with, uh, with no cars in front of you. Yeah, it is for sure. I've just got to make sure I get a good start now after all the work in the last race. But uh, it's really going to be down to who looks after their tyres the best. In the last race, I tried to conserve the tyres at the same time as, as to make up ground. And... Um, our tyres are in pretty good shape, so I'm really looking forward to it. Glenn Seaton and there with Andy Raymond. Here's how they'll line up for race two. Mark Scaife and the Winfield Commodore out of pole position. Glenn Seaton starts alongside. The second row positions three and four to the Shell FAI Falcons of Bauer and Johnson. Peter Brock starts out of position number five. From six, it's 23, Paul Morris, the Diet Coke Commodore. From seven, 11, Larry Perkins, the Castrol Commodore. From eight, car number six, Jimmy Richards, the Winfield Commodore. Thomas Mazera in the Mobile Telecom Commodore starts out of nine. And Tony Longhurst in car 25, out of position number 10. From 11, it's four, Wayne Gardner, Coca-Cola Commodore. 27 starts out of 12, that's Terry Finnegan. From 13, it's 33, Bob Pearson, the Product Commodore. And Kevin Waldock in the Playscape Falcon starts out of 14. Chris Smurden, car number 39, starts out of position 15. 16, it's 7, Neil Crompton, the second of the Coke Commodores. From 17, it's 47, John Trimboli. 18, 30, Alan Jones with a heck of a lot of work to do. 19 is 88, Steve Ellery, the uh, Ford Sierra, two-litre car. Glenn Mason in the Commodore VL starts out of position number 20 and 42. Bob Jones behind him in the Ampole Max 3 Commodore. 22nd position is car number 3, Trevor Ashby. And rounding out the 23 car field, car number 79, Mike Conway in a Commodore VL. 10 seconds now, Glenn Seaton just takes another little coolant as he prepares. He has to make a brilliant start here against Mark Scaife. They're ready for the second round. Scaife gets off the line, but Seaton gets off faster. Scaife picks the second gear up even faster, and they are side by side coming up Bitcher Pave Hill for the first time, and Mark Scaife will lead them down into Dunlop Loop for the first time, and Peter Brock made a brilliant start. Comes up on the inside here. And the Shell FAI car gets through on the inside and he could be a contender here as they make the exit to Dunlop Loop. And here they are with Scaife leading, Glenn Seaton in second, then it's Dick Johnson in third. Well, that truly was a great start by Glenn Seaton, but uh, whatever they've got in second gear in that gearbox of the Winfield car, Mark Scaife rocketed up the hill and was able just to get around the left-hander first and is holding first place now. Big mover in the pack is Paul Morris in the brand new Coca-Cola Commodore. I think he's up to fifth position. A great start. There he is, just tucked in behind the uh, Holt Deal team car. So it's Scaife leading Seaton onto the main straight for the first time as they come over our track here. Bow, Brock, and there was Paul Morris, VH Thunder over our camera, up the hill for the second time. Scaife leading Seaton. And serious stuff at the front of the field. Dick Johnson is back in third. Peter Brock is fourth. Paul Morris is fifth. And Jimmy Richards is now up to sixth as they make the exit to Dunlop Loop. And Seaton's sitting just out of the draft here of Mark Scaife. And Dick Johnson hanging onto the tail of that forward. It's great to see Seaton back in his rightful place. Had to fight in that first heat to get his way back from that terrible draw in the dash for cash. Set a new lap record in the process in the first heat, so he's certainly got plenty of speed on board. Jimmy Richards running, running wide there at the marbles. So too does uh, 
Wayne Gardner and the new Coca-Cola Commodore coming under pressure from uh, Trevor Ashby. Allen, they are terribly close. I mean, Scaife gets away here for about 10 metres, but it's on for Young and Old because Seaton is able to close up. Glenn's not going to let him go. He did a superb job, as Mark has indicated, working his way from sixth up to second. And now that he's got Mark in his sights, there's no way he's going to let go. He's just going to wring every ounce of energy he's got out oh. of his body. Look how much, how much track uh, Mark Scaife's using there right over the road. And unsettle steps. the car, and Seaton closes it up. There's no room there on the inside of the exit, but he's sitting right on the tail of this car, and he is going to keep Mark Scaife honest for the remaining 26 and a half laps of this race. Absolutely. These two cars very evenly matched. You can see they're just starting to open up a little bit of a gap oh. on John Bauer. You can hear the tyres screaming oh, under maximum man, braking. Zibble. Rear brake lock up on Glenn's part, just getting a little anxious, trying to stay right on Scaife's bumper bar. He knows he doesn't want to lose even an inch. Right. Uh, Great battle of the tyre companies at the front here too. Yokohama leading Bridgestone second, Dunlop third. As they come through, this is going to be a great test of the durability of the rubber in the second race. And certainly Seaton gave his car a pounding in that first heat, trying to get his way back up to the front row. John Bauer is in third spot. Fourth is Peter Brock. As once again, they put the inside rears over the top of the ripple strip. A look at the ground John Bauer makes up as they come through the Dunlop loop this time. Thomas Mazira back there in 0-1-5. Great fight back from him too. Remember, he started from the back of the grid after the car stalled on the warm-up lap for the first season. We go back aboard Glenn Seaton's car. Down into the two-ease corner, left-hander tight. Not much room on the exit. Accelerate. Yeah, virtually nothing yes. in it, but you can see that Mark Scaife just has a little bit of an extra acceleration out of those corners, Alan. I think they've got some trick gears in the gearbox. The uh, ratios are still free. At the moment, by free, I mean you can put anything you like in them, and uh, the Gibson team know how to work their calculators. And uh, when you have two equal cars that one accelerates a little bit better, you know it's in the gearbox. See just how much throttle Dick Johnson's giving the car as it comes up the straight there, sideways across our uh, track here. Mark Scaife still in control, so it's Holden, Ford, Ford, this is the top three. And we go back with Dick Johnson just giving Paul Morris and the new Coca-Cola Commodore plenty as they come through the back of the circuit once again. The fact that he's there to give him anything, man, is a credit. This is a tremendous job. Paul Morris up there with a, a brand new car. Murray Perkins in the pits. Things not going too well for LP, but his customer cars. This is one right ahead of him. He's doing very well. The Diet Coca-Cola car. And the brakes down into Goodyear Corner, performing very well on his first outing. Perkins was in position 14 and drops right out of the running. This car running a Holden engine. Tony Longhurst is the only of the first customer cars running a Chevy, but the Chevrolet engines will come on stream as the season progresses. You can see how uh, brave Dick is through the corners. He's running up onto the bumper bar and almost the uh, taillights of that Commodore on while Dick is still accelerating. He's hounding him for sure. This is not just a, a casual uh, drive around. He's trying hard to get by. It's fascinating seeing Paul Morris being able to, in the similar equipment, to the established stars in Tarenko Racing. He's been struggling with the BMW over the last couple of years, but this is really good stuff. Well, this is the closest competition that Paul Morris is going to get all season, so I hope he enjoys it. So, too, with Tony Longhurst. They've uh, made an outstanding debut in the V8s here today at Amaru Park. There goes Tony now, just at the tail of that group. And given that the, uh, the close confines of uh, Amaru Park and the fact there is very little room to pass, I think it sets up a brilliant round, second round of the championship at Melbourne Sandown Raceway next Sunday. So for all you fans in Melbourne, get out there. It'll be terrific. Great long straights at Sandown. They'll really open them up, mate. Jim Richards sneaking up on the back of Peter Brock. There in the uh, first of the Telecom Mobile Net cars. So fairly conservative start for Brock as he rejoins the factory team, but I'm sure more and more speed will come from the black and white cars as the season progresses. Well, they're having their own individual uh, duel middle of the field. The battle still rages up front, as you can just see in that last shot. Mark Scaife disappearing out of the turn with uh, Glenn Seaton still glued to his bumper. There's Thomas Mazira in the mobile net uh, mobile entry, closing up on the tail of Johnson, who is already on the tail of Paul Morris and the Diet Coke car. There's nothing in it uh, amongst any of them here, just a, a slight whoops, and uh, two or three cars are going to be by you. We, we really haven't enjoyed this level of competition for uh, ages and uh, the new formula is really up and away. 
only a year old. How close did comes to the back of the diet Coca-Cola car? Uh, I think uh, Paul Morris will we'll give him credit where oh. it's due. He'd still be oh. coming to grips with the, the weight of this car, yep. 1,300 kilos. He's used to running around in a BMW that was only weighing about 990, 1,000 at the worst. And uh, I think he's doing a great job here considering this is his first outing. The point the BMW guys made too is they're so used to driving left-hand drive cars, you get into a right-hand drive and all of a sudden the track looks very different. Picking apexes and placing the car in, in relation to concrete walls and things is quite uh, quite and difficult. Not only that, Mark, just changing, with, changing sure. gears with your other hand uh, might be causing them a little bit of consternation. Brock and Bauer continue to, uh, to fight as they go up the hill. Scaife still there, Seaton behind him. Bowers next and on his tail is Peter Brock. New lease of uh, life, taking the mobile uh, colours. And a little of their currency across to the Holden Racing team, married it up with Telecom, Mobile Net. And Brocky's up there running in the top four. So Brock follows Bow through. These front four, fairly stationary in the positions at the moment. Still having a little gap to Morris in that battle for fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth. One of the... Uh Ingredients in the formula was a fixed compression ratio. All engines are, are on 10 to 1 compression ratio. And it's nice to see on a hot day like this that we don't have a lot of cars parked at the side of the road boiling because everybody's had uh, engines uh, with compression ratios through the, through the roof. Is the guy doing it uh, better than uh, most today? Mark Scaife, Glenn Seaton, probably has dropped a car length or so. There's the gap back to third with John Bow. Peter Brock's right on his tail. Next is Paul Morris, then Dick Johnson. Thomas Mazira is next, Jimmy Richards. Then it's Tony Longhurst. The next one to come through is Wayne Gardner, and there's Alan Jones trying to make a move down the inside of him. Or Neil Cronkin, I should say. Yeah. So they've got some sorting to do. Don't uh, I think some people thought that uh, Gardner would blow in here today and uh, get away with the gold not to be brand spanking new team it'll take them a short while to get on the pace but they've got wally story fantastic uh, team and uh, they'll uh, even improve uh, i would think in seven days time when they go to sandown that's all they really lack is testing at the moment go back inside car 17 this is really going to test dick johnson's patience here yes i think he is getting a little bit uh, perturbed uh, morris just ever so slightly holding him up at the moment but he can't get the run through just very few spots here where you can slingshot by any car. And uh, Morris now starting to get just a little taily. He's, he's a little uncomfortable in the, in the vehicle still. But doing a good job nevertheless in such tough competition. Dick's making sure he knows what the competition's about. They're coming in, they've got a lap car between them. He hangs to the inside. And Johnson re... <laughs> to the inside and stayed on the grass as Definitely well. Definitely on the inside. So Jimmy Richards got through there quickly and so too uh, Tony Longhurst as they come uh, running down to the late corner. Morris Field. There's a fabulous looks. scrap here from third back to about ninth. Oh, and the lap car got caught right between them as they headed up to the uh, the turn that brings them on to the start finishing straight. Yeah, Peter Brock came off second best in that little uh, incident. There's no accounting for traffic. It's uh, the luck of the draw, but you have to find a way through. It's everybody's job. But here's a good job by Dick Johnson. Really tough, hard to do this, to judge the lines you want yourself and have a uh, block of flats in front of you. It's hard to see where you're going. No disrespect to a Commodore product, of course. <laughs> Thank you, Al. He said, the world's most famous Ford man. <laughs> this uh, Diet Coke... Commodore is going extremely well for its first outing. Very impressive, I think. Morris. There he goes down the inside. He's got him. That was right. Oh. Yeah, he's got himself. Dicks. Yeah. Just a bit too exuberant. As and I was saying, this Diet Coke Commodore is going extremely well <laughs> and withstanding all sorts of challenges. I want to know: is the Diet Coke Commodore lighter than the Coca-Cola Commodore? Uh, probably it has to be, just as a matter of uh, marketing principles, doesn't it? Yeah, Dick no. is the best at getting out of a, a problem. He's done this on a number of occasions, and he's right back in the fray with hardly losing a spot. Alan Jones moves up onto the tail of Dick Johnson's number 17 Shell FAI Insurance's car, but the uh, Johnson car appears just a little on the taily side there as he goes through there. One one guy who's not uh, taily is Mark Scaife, and we'll check them out on the Shell race score mid-distance. He leads. Glenn Seaton is in second. John Bauer runs in third. Peter Brock is fourth. Paul Morris, fabulous job. He's up to fifth.
half race distance in race two of round one of the Shell Australian Touring Car Championship from Sydney's Amaru Park. Positions remain unchanged. Mark Scaife, the race leader, Glenn Seaton, in uh, second spot. And of course, there are some problems here for Alan Jones as we go to the pits. Yes, Mike, Alan Jones has had a very, very unhappy day. We saw him going fairly well in the first heat until he was shunted a little bit uh, by Peter Brock. That caused him to put a new uh, tyre on the back of the car. There's still major problems with the Jones car. You can see them changing the Brinstones at the moment. Alan Jones is exhausted. He's sweating in the car. And, uh, yeah, basically a very, very unhappy day. Well, they'll get better days, hopefully, on some of the larger tracks. Here's the man who was dictated the opening round. Mark Scaife, the Winfield Commodore, fast qualifying time, winner of the dash, winner of the opening heat, and in front in heat two, and getting away a little bit from Glenn Seaton and the Peter Jackson Falcon EV, and they've opened up a massive gap. John Bauer, Dick Johnson, Peter Brock, Paul Morris, Larry Perkins, uh, all have had their opportunity to uh, stake a claim for this one. Well, you don't get good results in this business by accident, Mike. There's the leader going through. Mark Scaife next, of course, is Glenn Seaton. Peter Brock is up smartly. John Bow is there. Then it's Thomas Mazira. Behind Thomas Mazira as they come across the line, heading up the front straight. It's Jimmy Richards, then followed by Tony Longhurst. Paul Morris is the next one, followed then by Larry Perkins and Dick Johnson, who has dropped back through the pack. While we're talking positions, Jones was 10th when he had that tyre trouble. He's rejoined in position 19. And Jimmy Richards applying plenty of pressure here. You can see Ellery's uh, little two-litre um, Sierra parked off to the left. The only uh, two-litre car running uh, this opening uh, round today. He's surprisingly quiet, Jimmy Richards. I mean, a man with all his talent in this very competitive Winfield car. Scaife's out front demonstrating just how much potential the Winfield cars have. What's his problem? Tires, brakes. Well, it's 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 D-Day at the moment because watch Richards come out of this and pick up one or two. John Bow's been shuffled back. Now it's Brocky, Thomas Mazira, Tony Longhurst is in there as well. So Mazira was able to pick the pieces of that one up as they head up the hill once again. Well, it's very hot here today, and uh, if uh, any of the teams had uh, tire problems or worries about the uh, durability of their tires. Uh, we could be looking at an example of it, but it doesn't appear to be too much wrong with these uh, two cars. Jimmy's having a look. He's obviously uh, wound it up a couple of notches. He definitely wants to find a way around Brocky. A couple of Bathurst Mazira. contenders here, uh, Richards and Brock, uh, to, from memory, three Bathurst behind them as uh, driver and co-driver. Well, the gap has opened uh, marginally from our race leader, a little on the dusty side as someone's kicked up some dust. Scaife goes across the line. Seaton still runs in second spot. About eight car lengths then back to Peter Brock running in third and a good showing from him. Thomas Mazira is the next one followed by uh, Jimmy Richards, who's up here with Tony Longhurst, who just loves racing with Richards. Tony is right up there in there again, another brand new car with his uh, sidekick teammate the Diet Coke team, Paul Morris. Tony's done a superb job as well in the top 10 qualifying and moving here on Richards at the moment. Wayne Gardner debuting the new Coca-Cola race team, carrying the Coke uh, race cam. Give you an idea of Wayne at work. You'll recall that he was one of the uh, big movers running in Knights. On the racetrack, as we head down, he goes underneath the Ashby Reed car. Last year in this uh, race, it was, I guess, his first serious touring car event. He, he came through from the back of the field. But that was a race of carnage, and the drivers have all resisted getting involved into a lot of, a lot of bodywork contact today. So a lot of journalists with egg on their face. Just about every paper you read last week suggested this was going to be a, a stock car race, a demolition derby, and it's been so professionally driven thus far, we've seen hardly any panel damage at all. Well, these cars are all going to be at Sandown for round two next weekend, then across the water to be at Simmons Plains. Larry Perkins wants to make up for lost time. Well, oh, caught Paul Morris out just a little bit there. So there is no percentage here of having to take a wreck home tonight, and I think they are all playing it very, very well indeed. Yeah, Larry pitted for uh, fresh tyres and uh, has got the advantage there. He was much more in control of that corner. 
yeah, infinitely quicker, but um, we're well past half distance and he's a lap down. I don't think he's going to improve as a result of that stuff. Well, over the uh, top, here's the two uh, Johnson cars, the Shell FAI machines, Dick. John Bauer, who was uh, up there and uh, keeping the pressure on. Both have uh, drifted back through uh, the field just a little. The two oh. HRT cars, the uh, Telecom mobile cars, now running back there in third and fourth, with Brock third, Mazira fourth. Well, Dick will be kicking himself that he was just a bit impatient when he tried that move on Paul Morris earlier. Uh, but still running in a fine position here. It does seem as though uh, suggestions in the earlier race that the Shell cars were holding up Seaton and Jones were, were accurate. I mean, these cars aren't lapping as quickly as the Blue Falcons at the moment. Not they're quite. Not, they're not with their tyres at this uh, this state today, but Seaton uh, appears to be able to uh, to handle it uh, quite nicely because he gave his tyres a bit of a caning in the first heat when he came from sixth. It's a tough job, Mike. They have to qualify on the tyres on Saturday. They have to run the dash in the morning and two heats during the day. It's a big ask for any tyre. Well, seven I laps think to go. Seven laps to go as they went over the stripe last time. Time running out for Seaton as he makes his charge. The, or the original idea behind uh, holding back the number of tyres they can throw at a car was a financial consideration, not only for the leading teams, but more importantly for the privateers, so that brought them up and they didn't have to go and buy five or six sets of tyres for a weekend. To that point, it's made the drivers a little more careful. They've got to protect their tyres all day long because it'd be nothing more frustrating to be a privateer and see one of these guys throwing five sets of tyres at a car over a weekend. Per hour, practically. Six laps to go. Winding down and um, Mark Scaife leading from... Uh, Car number one, Glenn Seaton. And in fact, Peter Brock getting a little bit closer to the tail now of uh, Glenn Seaton as they head down the back straight towards Tui's turn. This is a good showing for Brocky. First time out with the general in how many years? Well, I'll, I'll have I'd have to look into my crystals for the last time. <laughs> since, since, since the polarizer incident, and I do regret Ugh. bringing that up because he won't be happy, but doing a great job, everybody... Um, Loves to see Peter driving for the general. There are a lot of people here, happy fans here, seeing him drive around in the bona fide product. 1986, I think, was the last time. And actually, in fact, Nigel Greenway, our stats man, tells me uh, the last time a Holden won a touring car championship round at Amaru Park was Alan Grice in a Holden Tirana back in 1978. So it's a long time. Oh, oh he's, he's trying. Doing it plenty. He's, he's trying. He's, he's working those Bridgestones over. <laughs> But uh, very, very durable tyre. Bridgestone has always made a strong running tyre. On occasions, their drivers have always not been as happy about some of the speed that's been available to other teams. But when it comes to uh, putting for dough on Sunday, it's often a Bridgestone tyre coming through. As Brock heads into that corner, we look out the front of uh, Wayne Gardner's um, Commodore VP. Presently running in position 11. So his car oh, could make it up into the uh, top 10. About four laps remaining. Coming down to uh, to his turn. And if I'm not uh, mistaken, that's Neil Crompton, just one spot up in front of him. Coming down to the late corner. Some great pickies out of our uh, race cams today. Yeah, I think so. I think that's uh, that's Compton with the boss closing on him fairly rapidly. This could be interesting. Just the click of the gearbox as they go up through that six speed. There's no leaning on the tyres or getting them sideways now. that They've done their, their fair job. When I was with these guys this morning, I was having a look at their outfit, their trailer, their brand new truck. They're very professional. They've got themselves organized in a wonderful manner. And there doesn't seem to be too much hostility either. Crompton and Gardner getting on like a house on fire. Let's see if that compatibility extends to the racetrack as the gap narrows. Well, I don't expect Neil is going to just pull over to the left and uh, allow Wayne by. But uh, any team to survive has to work in harmony. Alan Jones problems with the number 30 car has pulled to the right hand side of the circuit and the up front that die still continues between Mark Scaife over Glenn Seaton and a closing Peter Brock so not the happiest days as uh, Andy Raymond mentioned earlier for Alan Jones hopefully they'll be able to turn that around when they get back to home base in Melbourne and a better performance next week at Sandown. Yeah miserable day he started in uh, position 18 in this race. Look after back it. just look back here he comes 
Glenn Seaton now moves onto the tail of Mark Scaife. They have two and a quarter laps to go. And Peter Brock, they've already had the product car, I think it is, has gone into the tyre wall. That won't make any difference at all. Two to go. This championship round is going down. Scaife may have been held up in slower traffic there. He's managed to just pull away a little bit going up the hill. He's driven superbly. He's up in a lap car. He pulls to the uh, outside of the circuit. And look at Brocky, this is a great race. A last couple of laps to, to die for. We've got one, two, and three on the same lap within a car length of each other. Holden, Ford, Holden, and Brocky trying to get back on. Well, he's already on the dates after this one. He'd like a little slice to make a Holden one, two, and do it for the factory. They come downhill to the left-hander at uh, Tui's, and we'll track them through here with our special camera. There you can see Brock trying to set up uh, Glenn Seaton. He'll He's go down the outside of him or maybe find a pass here on the inside. Race cam will cover look. it. He'll try and swing back on the inside here now. Let's see whether he can do it. Hard on, no, he can't. He's gone to the outside. Can he do it? No, he won't do it there. He'll no. come in to take the last lap board this time. Mark Scaife gets across the line and it's Glenn Seaton now trying to defend second place in the Peter Jackson Falcon from Peter Brock. An outstanding performance, an outstanding debut, back with the general again in third spot. A legion of Holden fans going berserk as they come over the top of the circuit. Brocky pressing, looking every which way. He'll probably try and do it under brakes if he does it at all at Goodyear or late corner as it used to be. I would say there wouldn't be too much rubber left on the 30 car. No, no, they're... Uh, well, the heat of the day has come into it as well, mate. They do. Searing heat here today for the opener at uh, Amaru Park. Take nothing away from the man in the red machine. Car number two, Mark Scaife, national champion two years ago. Glenn Seaton beating for the crown last year. Peter Brock has been there before. It's going to be a very close Shell Australian Touring Car Championship Series with round two to come at Sandown next weekend. Final corner, Mark Scaife, a perfect scorecard for round one at Amaru Park, takes it across the line to beat Glenn Seaton and the Peter Jackson Falcon and Peter Brock in the 05 Mobile Telecom Commodore VP. Fabulous drive. Maximum points going to Mark Scaife. Three championship points for fast time. Won the dash and has won two heats today. Confirmation of points on the Shell race score. Scaife the winner over Seaton. Brock, outstanding performance for third. Mazera finished in fourth. Jim Richards was fifth. Sixth spot went to Tony Longhurst. Seventh to Paul Morris. Eighth to Dick Johnson. Ninth to John Bauer. Wayne Gardner finishes tenth and will be back to talk to the winners after the break. Ladies and gentlemen, you came here to see the first round of the Australian Touring Car Championship, traditionally the Amaru Park round. I think you got a fantastic spectacle. A big round of applause for all the boys who made it such a fantastic afternoon. I'm sure I won't... <laughs> I'm sure I won't have a problem eliciting a cheer for our third place getter today. He's back with the general and you're all thrilled about that. A wonderful third place to Peter Brock, Peter Perfect. Rocky, uh, third place, a, a pretty happy day for uh, the return of the fold? Yes, it was, and uh, we, we uh, made a lot of correct choices when it came to uh, chassis set up and the speed to run the race and that sort of business, and uh, full credit to uh, the boys. A fantastic uh, car to drive, a uh, lot more power than we ever had before. And uh, to our friends at Mobile Net, uh, Mobile and uh, General Motors, thanks very much for your support, fellas. I thought you might have pulled the silver medal. You were having a look at I was, uh, I was, the baby-faced uh, assassin there. I know, and I, I hoped he wouldn't take the inside line around the stop-go corner, but unfortunately he's learnt too well. And, Absolutely. Uh, it was a drag, but it was a great race. Well done. Look forward to uh, seeing you at Sandown next weekend. Peter Brock, second place getter, a fantastic effort. Touring car champion last year. Please make him welcome the man that... Ray, uh, that uh, uh, Mike Raymond has christened the baby-faced assassin, Glenn Seaton. A big round of applause for Ford's hero today. <laughs> Mate, second place. You happy with second place? Yeah, I really am, Doug, because um, we, we draw a six in a dash, and which was fairly a, a bit of a struggle around You've got to be the unluckiest man with those cards. <laughs> I can see why the family closed down the uh, bookmaking firm. It definitely was a bad venture. Yeah, you can't believe it, because even my sponsor sponsors the event, so you think they could do something. But... <laughs> yeah. No, it's a thank you to the boys and the team who have done a fantastic job over Christmas. Uh, my sponsors, Peter Jackson, also Ingersoll Ram, Bridgestone for the fantastic ties. Thank you. Glenn, thank you very much. <laughs> and our winner today, a first up victory for the Holdens, Scapey. <laughs> You've lost a few kilos out there today, mate. Yeah, it's a pretty tough race, Glenn, uh, especially in the second one. You know, it's a bit hotter, and uh, Glenn made me work very, very hard, but the 
Yokohama tyres held in very well and the testing that the team have done over the off season have proved uh, to be a pretty good package. Congratulations, a fantastic and exciting spectacle. I think next week at Sandown should be even better. Can you hold them out again, mate? Well, I hope so, Doug, and uh, I think that the rest of the series will be very tough anyway. So uh, thanks to Winfield, Yokohama, Holden and Qantas for their support. Thank you. A wonderful round, a fantastic uh, race today, which augurs well for the entire series. We'll be looking for you next week at Sandown. Back to you, Mike. <laughs> Thank you, Dougie Mulray. Here are the championship points. Mark Scape leads on 46, Glenn Seaton on 32, Peter Brock now on 24, and on 16 points, Dick Johnson, Thomas Mazira, and you can also add John Bauer to that list. Well, a stunning opening round of the Touring Car Championship for Shell here today at Amaru Park. Round two promises to be even better, so why not join us a week from today when we go to Sandown Park Raceway in Melbourne. Goodbye until then. <laughs>